Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It's Tuesday uh, and the CQ day. <laughs> uh, we're calling anybody who uh, wants to pay attention and perhaps has uh, something they'd like to find out or something that might be helpful and useful to them. I'm not sure that is what the program will be today. I can hardly believe it's inspiring. Uh, it uh, is a, a little difficult to do, but it's something I've learned in the last couple days that I have to talk about because it's important, and I think it will help us all make decisions. First of all, the uh, earthquake in Turkey, the toll continues to mount, and I can hardly believe the panic and terror. They say that they're getting text messages from people who are trapped under the fallen buildings, and will they ever be able to reach them? But uh, how sad, how terrifying to think of that situation for anybody. It just breaks your heart. So uh, with that, I also have to go on and talk about something to, that uh, is maybe instructing for us, and uh, hopefully we'll learn from it. The word is now coming out. Some people are beginning to say everything we did, almost everything we did with the covid shutdown was wrong. It didn't work. It was wrong. And perhaps the damage uh, could be long, long term. And then, yes, um, I'm fascinated by the electric car phenomenon, and I've got friends who very much think it will be the coming thing. But I also discovered something, or not only discovered, felt something that led me to say, I'll never buy an electric car until they get these two things Fixed. And so uh, if you'll give me time today, we'll spend about 12, 15, maybe 20 minutes if uh, you want to listen along that. <laughs> and if I am that long-winded, uh, we'll see if we can be helpful today and useful. I'm Stan Hughes, so the program is interesting, oftentimes inspiring, and hopefully always a little bit instructing ideas that we can consider and hopefully live and work a little bit better. And the program begins right now. I guess they're going to declare the COVID stuff formally over. And... Um, that has not going to make a great deal of difference because most people are already living that way. But people will continue to wear their masks for a long time, whether they are useful or needful or not. The people who wear them find them useful and needful, and that's just fine as long as they don't insist that I wear one. And uh, what happened is that one of the uh, people who's been very, very much involved, and he says, I believed in everything we were doing and everything we were saying about the whole COVID shutdown and uh, forced mandated vaccine process and all of the things we were saying. And it turns out, he says, that we got it wrong in almost everything from uh, the vaccine mandates to the mask mandates, certainly to the complete economic shutdown and the businesses that we put out of business. And of course, probably the worst thing we did was to uh, close down the schools. Uh, we will always continue to fight about that, probably for a long time, but the evidence is becoming, uh, I think, a little bit overwhelming if we're open-minded to it, where, you know, good and smart people say, you know, I'm sorry, we were wrong. I remember Donald Trump saying, he said, when all of this was happening, we got to make sure that the cure is not worse than the disease. And uh, did, we, uh, did that happen? Was the cure worse than the disease? Well, it'll be a long time before the ultimate judgment, if any, is ever made on that. But it, it really means that we need to be very, very careful about the next time. And uh, hopefully, uh, wiser people and people who have what I would call some spiritual wisdom as well as economic good sense 
and who truly, when they say we're going to follow the science, understand that science is not to be followed. It is to be a process to help us discover things. And uh, let's be careful what we claim that we have discovered. You enter into any situation with a, an ultimate, ultimate humility. And the words you oftentimes simply say, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this will work. Let's try this. Let's see. And then be open to the fact that what you see may not be what you think is. So uh, that is a part of what is breaking. Uh, some brave souls are continuing to come up and say this. And I think... Uh, the one person who does it will give permission to others to finally come out and say, this is what we believed and we were wrong. And I've done that on a number of occasions. <laughs> a number of the entrepreneurial projects uh, that I got involved with, uh, with uh, the situations that we were trying to do. And uh, at the end of it, I would say, yes, uh, <laughs> experiments never fail, but the project can. And now I have to admit that we got it wrong. We, uh, we didn't do it right. We were misinformed. We didn't have enough information. Uh, we weren't smart enough. We weren't talented enough. We weren't able to get that done. And so we're going to close it down, and we're going to try and do something else. And that's uh, the wonderful experience about being an entrepreneur. Because there are people who can go through life in a very, very secure and comfortable job, and they never have to admit <laughs> failure. They can always excuse it or go by it or not have it consequence to them. But many of us live differently. Just a thought. Now, with that in mind, I changed my mind in one sense. Now, <clears throat> I saw on, and I'll give you, this is, it was the Tucker Carlson show. They brought on a man who has written a book called Red Cobalt. And what it was, and we knew this, I knew this, but I hadn't, you know, experienced it or felt anything, that the batteries, we all know this, the problem is not that the electric car motor doesn't work wonderful and is obviously more efficient than a rotary, you know, gasoline engine. Certainly, that's for sure. But the problem is not the electric motor. It is the source of energy, and that is the battery. And now we know that even though battery technology has truly rocketed, it's still a very expensive piece of non-machinery. And one of the primary things you need are you, you need some copper, for sure. You probably need some silver, and you need cobalt. And the state of Minnesota, my hometown, <laughs> has said that, hey, you know, there is a lot of cobalt up there in the uh, northern part of the state, but that's kind of the uh, sacred boundary waters canoe area, and we're not going to allow uh, cobalt mining as uh, wanted and desired by some right now. Probably never. Well, the problem is, in the Congo, that's where both the Chinese and other interests, because that's where there is a lot of cobalt. And we saw pictures of the people who were mining it. I've heard about this, but uh, check it out. Google it, bing it, whatever you do, about red cobalt and the story and the pictures in this ghastly, as he called it, hellscape of open pit mining, thousands of people and thousands of children, even pregnant women, women carrying their babies, working in the toxic very toxic environment, chipping away by hand to uh, extract cobalt. It is, you talk about slavery. Oh, they get paid. 
but what they get paid for doing this dangerous, obviously life-threatening work is a pittance. But guess what? That cobalt is going to be used by those people who are going to buy seventy to a hundred thousand dollar automobiles that are electric automobiles, and they have to have that cobalt. So their beautiful electric automobile, first of all, we've got to make sure that the energy that they took out of the charging station or the energy they took out of their home charging station actually was. Here's the deal. It really was more carbon neutral than anything else. That it did not do the damage (laughs) that they're trying to avoid anymore than what they are doing in taking the electricity out. Make sure you have that equation fixed and worked out. Secondly, we cannot continue, at least in my mind and spirit, to not be a part of the red cobalt where we're going to be a part of those boys and girls and children and very, very, very poor, desperate people. Their lives are being put in danger and uh, things are happening there that are almost ungodly, and and I knew it, but I hadn't experienced because I hadn't seen the pictures of it. And my wife and I, as we watched those pictures, we just gasped. (laughs) Oh, that's part of what we are paying in human blood and misery to have the batteries for those fancy and beautiful and nice electric automobiles. So unless they get those two things fixed, show me that the electricity that I'm using actually did not cause any more damage than the uh, fossil fuel electricity that I am presently using. You show that to me and demonstrate it beyond uh, any real reasonable doubt And then, let's get the cobalt deal fixed. Let's make sure that isn't happening. And until that is done, uh, I'm not buying an electric car. I'm just not going to do that. (laughs) Well, there we go. Uh, It's Tuesday, and you're busy. But I just simply wanted to uh, perhaps interject a thoughtful note there. For all of us, that uh, we be very, very careful, uh, unless it really is based on humility, and that's what we lacked in the COVID crisis. And is it humane? I'm not sure that the electric car is honoring the entire issue of humanity. You know, there's the old joke we oftentimes made a very good saying into the old joke is, what would Jesus do? You know, well, knowing what we know, would Jesus ever drive a car himself? And uh, if he would drive a car, would he drive an electric car as opposed to a uh, motor car as we know it? Just something to think about, something to wonder about. How can we make life better, not only for ourselves, but for others? That's the deal. That's the deal. I'm Stan Houston. The program has been on this uh, difficult Tuesday, hopefully helpful to you in some way. Please reach out to me. We are creating a number of things that will be helpful to you, I believe. First of all, the news is also that podcasting is growing by leaps and bounds, and it will become one of the preferred ways, particularly for nonprofit companies, to get their message out to their people. And that is what I really want to do. 
so we can help you. Witradio.net, witradio.net. I'm also going to be speaking at the Rotary Club and talking to them about leadership and what I call cowboy leadership and also uh, showing that there is a way to begin the entrepreneurial life because it's not just a way to make a living. It is a state of mind and a way of living. And uh, I firmly recommend it. It'll scare the daylights out of you most of the time, many of the times, but it will be the way that will keep you sharp, keep you on edge, and keep you uh, growing in wisdom, insight, and truth. So don't, uh, don't deny that in your life. StanHouston at gmail.com. StanHouston at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. And, of course, you're welcome to join us with your interesting ideas. And uh, absolutely, we're in the second month of 23. It's time for you to find out uh, how you and your business and your ideas can be on the radio. Best and blessings to you, and uh, dear God, bless the poor miners of cobalt in the, the Congo of Africa. Take care. Bye for now. Four.